Good morning, and welcome to Half Faith Let It Begin, Monday, July 22nd, 2024. Yesterday, I was at my church, and I delivered a devotion entitled, Trust in Him. Now, due to copyright infringements, we are not able to air any of the music, so you're only going to hear portions of uh, my actual uh, talk. So without further ado, this is a 24-minute episode, and there will be no formal intro. Here now, trust in him. I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Oh, come on. This is the church on the hill. We can do better than that. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. There we go. It's a hot day, so, you know, we got we to gotta loosen up, and uh, I'm going to let you know right now, we're going to be out of here early today, so... And that's because, you know, I, I got to be honest, um, I was, I read my, my sermon and I got a little sick and I accidentally emailed my sermon to the wrong email, so I lost it. But that's okay, because sometimes when you write something, it's not meant for some, somebody else. So that was probably written for me. And I already read it to myself. So today's is definitely something designed for someone here today. My name is Angel Santana. I'm an elder here at First Reformed Church. Pastor Jim is away in a much needed rest. I would like to welcome you. If you're new, there's exits here on the left and right. And if you need a restroom break, you go to the stairs. It's the second door on your left. Well, it's my fifth, actually 16th time being up here. It has been a blessing. I love this church. I love everyone here that has helped me, guide me to become who I am today. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all come together and rejoice and bless his holy name. This morning's prayer of confession. May Almighty God, who caused light to shine of darkness, shine in our hearts, cleansing us from all our sins and restoring us to the light of the knowledge of God's glory in the face of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The summary of law goes like this. God will show you his glory today and every day. He will show you this in different ways. By sound, by sight, by words. Today, God reminds us that God loves us, that God believes in us, that God trusts us, and God will never leave our side. So trust in him. Our prayer of illumination is written as this. Guide us, O Lord, by your word and Holy Spirit, that your light, we may see in your light, in your truth, find freedom, and in you will discover peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All of these, these statements are important. We must remember to trust in God and to believe in him and to know that he is with us. This morning's gospel reading is from John 15, verses 1 through 17. Hear now the word of the Lord. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears fruit, bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, as I also remain in you. No branch, can, neither can you, bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands, and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. 
Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because, I ser because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I have learned from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. The word of the Lord. On the way here this morning, which is not going to be up on here, I stumbled upon a verse and I said, boy, I got to read this one out loud. It's from John 3, verses 1 through 3. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Word of the Lord. So how do we trust in God? You know, I want to go back to the scripture of the vine. When I read this, <laughs> when I read this scripture, the vine and the branches, I got to be honest. Uh, it took me a long time to understand the meaning behind it. I really couldn't understand what was being said in the scripture. You know, and then it dawned on me, as a, an elder or a minister, or a pastor, uh, a deacon, anytime you go to church and they start reading scriptures, do you ever find yourselves in the pew going like this? You all nod our head, right? But we really don't know what we're nodding for sometimes, right? And then you go down to the, you know, the the, the area where we're starting to do our fellowship and somebody walks up to you and says, hey, what'd you think of that scripture today? And you look at him with a blank stare because you're probably thinking, I can't articulate that. That's nothing to be embarrassed about. That's happened to me. I'm sure that's happened to you. But that's why we come together and we share the word of God to express what you heard from that scripture, what you understood from that scripture. So let me explain what I believe I just read, and I'll put it in my words. Jesus is the vine, the true source of life for us believers. We are branches connected to him, drawing that life from him as branches draw the necessary nutrients to survive and flourish. At glance, we may assume that branches bear fruit, but in another sense, it's really the vine that makes it all happen. The point is, there is such interconnectedness that while we are doing the work, but there is even more here to the short statement that I just read. You see, when Jesus says that he is the vine, it is the last of the series of statements that he makes in the Gospel of John using the same form, I am the bread of life, I am the good shepherd, I am the resurrection, and the life. The repeated use of I am suggests the, the name God gave to Moses by which he called on him. I am who I am. Jesus is implying that he is the vine from which all life comes. That he is indeed God as the Son. Every life, every life in the creation or in the order that Jesus is stating is the new life of the kingdom that now flows out of him as well. So we're all part of the vine. We're all the branches. We are the ones that bear the fruit. We all have the abilities to grow and branch out to others. Some of us branch out. Some of us get a little lost. Sometimes we need a little water to grow. Sometimes the sun doesn't shine. Sometimes it feels like we're a little off. How do we spread 
seeds? How can we bear fruit as Jesus asks of us? I can recall being in my early 20s, not knowing who I was going to be. When you're in your 20s, you think you know it all. But some of us have this feeling, this energy that we can't control, this glow that wants to shine. And I couldn't figure out where that was going from but I can feel it festering inside of me. I went on a retreat. I went and spent you know, three days called Decolores, Tres Dias. I met a gentleman who was a candidate just like me who saw me in the middle of the night praying because I didn't know why I was there. I didn't know why I was chosen to be there. That night, I gave myself to the Lord. And it just so happens that the very next morning, my parents were there to volunteer to serve breakfast, and they didn't know that I was going to announce that I gave myself to the Lord. That's when my seeds began to grow. I stand here today at 46 years old and tell you that in the 26 years that I remember, I was embarrassed at times to tell people that I love God. I was not sure where I was going to go. I thought friendships would be more important than our Heavenly Father. I did so many good things. I've done bad things. But you want to know one thing I never did? I never, ever questioned His Word. God has a plan for each and every one of us. The seeds that are growing on this branch is allowing you the opportunity to branch out. So many times, we don't realize, we don't understand what that means. Well, I'll put it to you in my terms. My father, Angel Santana Sr., my mother, Luisa Santana, are my gardeners. They have planted seeds in me. And I have began to branch out. This church, every person that is in this church has been my seed, have backed me, have helped me grow. You are not here by accident. Your abilities, your gifts that God has given you is allowing you the opportunity to branch out. So maybe today was the day that you needed to have a little bit of watering in your seeds. Maybe today was the day that you needed to branch out. I'm asking you a favor. Give yourself a few minutes each day and talk to him. You can cry with him. You can yell at him. You can scream at him. It doesn't matter. It is between you and our Heavenly Father. See, the Lord is my Savior, and He provided me with a gift. So as I extend my branch to those in need, I remember that we all make the body of Christ. We are all part of the branch of the vine. What we do to plan, to, what, we, what we plan to do with this branch and what we do with our words and our actions is how we walk out of here today, making sure that we keep the branches from the vine stronger today and every day. So I leave you with these three things that I have lived by. Three things. And these are the three things that I believe can help keep us on track. There are three words. Listening, stillness, and gratitude. Listening, stillness, and gratitude. When you listen, you remain in what happens in us just to start the conversation with Jesus Christ. Start each morning by having a conversation with him about some passage of scripture that maybe you have thought about or read about that day. 
Then be still for a, mo- for a few moments and ask Jesus what to do. What do you want me to say today? What can I do? Jesus is always trying to speak to us, but often we do not take the time to listen. Stillness. Try to sit in silence for five to ten minutes each day. As thoughts come up, don't try to resist them or retain them. Just let them go. Be still. Over time, you will begin to notice more of his presence already alive in you. Gratitude. One of the surest ways to learn to stay at home with Jesus is to practice gratitude. Take some time regularly to give thanks. Use these categories each for a few minutes to notice these things. Give thanks for what you have and what you've seen. Then what you have heard and what you have touched with your hands. Then what places your feet have taken you. And finally, what your heart has loved. Final final thought for you. I can't even begin to tell you how many times I've stood up here or at other churches and shared about the storms that I've battled, the struggles that I've gone through. I don't want to make this about Angel, but we all have had our struggles. We all have had our misfortunes. We all have had our faith tested. Trusting in God, believing in Him, knowing that he is with you and connecting dots and knowing that he is going to be with us until we take our final breaths, until he takes us home, should make you feel at ease. Allow the word of God, allow our opportunities, our gifts, our talents to move forward. And allow your branch to plant more seeds for those that are encountering you. So remain in Jesus Christ. It's not just one of the many things that we are asked to do as Jesus' followers. It is the one thing from which everything else proceeds. To miss this is to miss him. And to miss him is to miss it all. Amen. I'd like to welcome back my father um, to, the, to the church as well. As many of you know, he had suffered um, a minor stroke. And, uh, you know, as a child and as him being my gardener, um, it, it's hard when you see your folks go through that. Um, I know some of us have dealt with things like that. So I would like to lift up in prayer, of course, and welcome my dad back. But I also pray for each and every person's family members whether they're traveling, whether they're, you know, dealing with issues of their own that maybe you don't want to share with us this morning, that is okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start us off with a silent moment of silence. And if those of you that don't want to share something that's very personable, allow this time to be with you and the Heavenly Father, and then I will close us out in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. Lord, Many of us have expressed our concerns. Many of us have also asked you for the ability to come together. We ask you, Lord, now more than ever to pray for those that are traveling. We pray for our minister that's coming back. We pray for our praise team leader to come back. We thank you for all those that have stepped up and helped us. We pray for this congregation and this church. We lift up in prayer all the children all over the world as they continue to go out in the summer vacations, protect them in the schools of summer schools and protect them of their camps and their swimming areas. We lift up in prayer our military personnel, including our veterans, foreign and domestic. We lift up them in prayer. We continue to lift up in prayer government officials. May they find a way to get along, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to continue to watch over our firefighters, EMTs, first responders, and, of course, police and fire and rescue. We continue to lift up in prayer our churches, our ministries, our congregations, our consistories, our hospitals, and our doctors and nurses. We ask you all of these things as we come together and pray the words that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our time of worship is over. Receive the benediction. Go out into the world and allow your branches, your fruit, your seeds to flourish. Allow Christ to be a part of your life today and every day. As I leave you today, I leave you with the words that my mom told me and I will share with you. You are special. Do you want to know why? Because when you were born, all the angels came from heaven. Do you know why? Because you are special. May God be with you. May he shine his light upon you and grant each and every single one of you peace on earth. And remember that God loves you. God believes in you. God trusts you. And God will never leave your side. Que Dios te bendiga. May God bless you. Have a good day.